Hello everyone. As we start our chapter on work and energy, I'd like to give a bit of an overview. Here you can see a diagram of a picture pushing on an object, uh, and work is defined as a force exerted over a distance. And then in this diagram, you can see a pendulum swinging back and forth, and there's a certain amount of energy associated with it, and part of that energy is gravitational potential energy, and part of it is kinetic energy. And the pendulum does not just have one or the other, but during almost every time, except for the very highest points and the very lowest points, has both kinds of energy, just varying amounts of both. But the total amount of energy stays the same. And that's what we're going to explore further, work and energy. All right, so what is energy? I find that energy is one of the hardest things to define, but not the hardest thing to understand. So we'll define it or try to define it here in two different ways. One is the capacity to do work, and another is a source of usable power. So I'll agree those aren't great definitions. I haven't found any better ones. However, as we go through this unit, I think you'll come to a very good understanding of what energy is. So let's start by going through some different kinds of energy. Chemical energy, well, that's associated with the food we eat and that chemical energy we take it in and our body turns it into mechanical energy and electrical energy and our neurons and thermal energy. We are mammals after all. Speaking of thermal energy, that's one of the types of energy. Oh, and I should back up. Another example of chemical energy would be trees or coal, which can be burned and can create thermal energy. Mechanical energy could be that associated with a bicycle moving or um, the pistons in a car moving and a turbine turning. Electromagnetic energy, that's anything from x-rays and microwaves to solar energy um, from the sun and uh, infrared, ultraviolet, light, gamma rays, and so on. Nuclear energy, it's energy stored in the nucleus of atoms. And wind energy. And so these aren't all the different types of energies, but there are quite a few examples for you. And we're going to be focusing on mechanical energy in this chapter. Later on, in a later chapter, we'll get into thermal energy more, but we're really concerned with mechanical energy. Kinetic and potential, two specific kinds of potential are gravitational potential and spring potential. So it's going to going to feel like it's three kinds, kinetic, spring potential, and gravitational potential. All right, so we can broadly split those into two categories, kinetic energy, which is energy of motion, and potential energy, which is stored energy. An example of kinetic energy is a moving car or a ball that's falling. Now, remember the pendulum example from the first slide, Objects don't just have one or the other, at least a lot of times they don't just have one or the other. And so just because a ball is falling doesn't mean it has zero potential energy, because if it's falling it means it still has a ways to go, so there's still potential, and that potential energy turns into more kinetic energy, so it falls faster and faster as more and more of the potential energy turns into kinetic energy. Um, an example of potential energy would be a compressed spring or a stretched spring for that matter, a car at the top of the hill, or a car two-thirds of the way down the hill. Because when it's two-thirds of the way down the hill, it's still one-third of the way to go. So it still has potential. All right, let's look at some examples. Well, really just talk about one example, and then I'll show you another. Um, I already talked about a pendulum being an example of being able to be used to illustrate concepts of conservation of energy really is what we're talking about because the total amount of energy stays the same it's just converting back and forth between gravitational potential energy and kinetic energy and the sum of those two is always equal and so there's a great demonstration I encourage you to go look it up where usually physics teachers will take a bowling ball pendulum and they'll pull it back and they'll hold it up to their nose and let go and it swings out and it comes back and it comes very close to their nose again, but it doesn't hit them because the total amount of energy stays the same. As it's swinging, the energy is changing types, back and forth, comes and does not hit them in the nose. 
Um, and now let's look at this skateboarding example. All right, now you can see a skateboarder moving back and forth. And we are going to put up a bar graph here. And as the skateboarder moves back and forth, you can see that his total amount of energy is staying the same. That's this yellow bar, whereas the potential and the kinetic keep changing. Now let's just pause it. We can see right now he has more potential than kinetic. I'm going to go a little bit further, almost to the bottom. All right, so well, just not quite at the bottom. But even when he was at the bottom, you see this didn't go to zero. And well, why is that? It's because the amount of gravitational potential energy, we have to define it relative to somewhere. And right now, that energy is defined relative to this blue dashed line here. And so even when he's at the lowest point on the ramp, he's still some number of feet or meters above the gravitational potential energy reference line. And as we'll learn later in the chapter, we can move this to wherever we want. And so if we do that, now we can see that when he's at the bottom, he does have zero gravitational potential energy. So that's kind of a strange thing, but we are allowed to pick wherever we want to be the zero line for gravitational potential energy, and we just have to stick through it, stick with it throughout that analysis. And if we do another analysis, we can change it for the next time. All right, but the main thing I wanted, to, wanted you to see here is that the total amount of energy is staying constant. It's just changing back and forth between the two kinds, and that most of the time, both kinds of energy are present, both potential, specifically gravitational potential, and then kinetic energy. All right, now we're going to move on to the idea of conservation of energy in more detail. So the total amount of energy in the universe never changes. And there's a video you can watch if you're, if you're interested. And let me just bring up a little bit more. Here we go. So the idea that the total energy in the universe never changes is initial energy equals final energy. It's just a simple way to put it. We're going to make this a little more complicated and then a lot more complicated looking. But the idea is fairly simple. The energy of the universe cannot increase, but the energy for a system can. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah, we're not going to be doing calculations for the whole universe, so we have to break it down into some reasonable size piece, smaller than the whole universe, and do calculations based on that. So for a system, we can increase the energy in a system. Think about the bowling ball pendulum or any other pendulum. It's swinging back and forth. If you give it a push, well, depending on when you push it and which way you push it, it's going to speed up or slow down the pendulum and give it more energy, and then it's going to swing higher than it was before. So that's clearly an example where we can change the amount of energy in the system. All right? And so the initial amount of energy plus the change is equal to the final amount of energy. And specifically, the change happens by work being done. And the work term can be positive or negative, as we'll see later. All right, so here's that equation. And well, I said it was going to get more complicated looking. But again, remember that idea is simple. All right, now there's three kinds of energy that we're dealing with, kinetic energy, potential energy, and gravitational potential energy. And so let's look at how this expands out. So this initial energy term just gets rewritten as the sum of these three terms. And the I just stands for initial. Then we have the work term. And then the final energy, it can also exist in these three forms. Okay? And most of the time, we don't have all seven of these present. A lot of times it's two or three, sometimes more. But usually it's two or three of these, and the rest are zeros. So it really doesn't have to be super complicated. But this great equation, again, simplifies just the initial energy plus the change equals the final energy. And now I'm going to make it look well, perhaps a little more complicated. And both this equation and the next one are on your equation sheet. Okay, So here I've replaced each of these terms with its corresponding equation on how it's calculated. For example, gravitational potential energy is equal to the mass times the acceleration due to gravity. And that's a scalar, so that's positive 9.8 meters per second squared times the height above that reference line. And that was the blue dashed line in our skateboard simulation. Okay, so we'll do both of those. 
So you can see where those come from. And then there's the spring potential energy. K has to do with how stiff the spring is. Delta X is how much it's stretched or compressed from its rest state. And you see those. And then the kinetic energy is involves how much mass there is and how fast it's going. And you could put in a negative value here, but really this is just the speed, and it doesn't matter if you put a negative value in there because you're squaring it. So as long as you put it in correctly, uh, it's going to be a positive value for kinetic energy. All right, so now you see where each of those come from. And the main thing I want you to remember is that even though the equation can look complicated, the idea is simple. Again, it's the initial amount plus the change equals the final amount. And that's true for lots of different things like your bank account or the number of bottles of water in your refrigerator. The initial amount plus how much it changes equals the final amount.